Welcome back to The Crochet Crowd. So it's my friends at Yarnspirations.com. Today is Quackers the Crochet Duck by Sarah Zimmerman. If you go to the more information of this video, you can find the link for this free pattern, but you can also learn more about Sarah. She's a leading expert on amigurumi, has books out in the stores, just in case you are interested. This is Bernat Blanket. It is a 15 inch tall quacking duck. And this is using contrast A is sun soaked and B is pumpkin spice. I don't have those in stock, so I'm not gonna uh, freak out about it, but I am going to use Bernat Blanket Baby Blanket Sparkle. This here is called Sunshine Sparkle. And then I found in my baby collection here, Bernat Baby Blanket, and this here is called Coral Blossom. So I'm gonna be using those two today, and you need some safety eyes that are 20 inches and some polyfill stuffing. So I got some safety eyes that you see here. If you don't want, if you have these and you don't want the iris color to be different from the outside here, then what you can do is do is get some sandpaper, just scratch off the coloring that is painted on the back and then use a magic marker and then fill it in to be black. And then you'll have those eyes as well. And they have a backing that makes it a safety eye that are pretty much impossible to fall out. So let's begin. And we're gonna get started in this pattern. You'll need a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook in order to play and a stitch marker, which I'm just gonna use some spare yarn and we're gonna get right into it today. So let's go in order from what she has in the pattern. We have the beak and we're gonna be starting with that. It's not stuffed with polyfill as she says, and we'll just follow the instructions step by step. It's not very much information here and you'll notice it'll go pretty quick. So let's begin and we are going to start off with a slip knot and we're going to chain a total of seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Let's go on to the first round. So the first round, you're gonna go second chain from the hook. So count back one and two. I know it's harder to see this yarn on camera, but just trust in it. So you're gonna go one single crochet, and the next one is one single crochet. The next two are going to be two single crochets in each of the chains. So just count those out loud together. So we have one and two is into that same chain and then do it again in the next. So one and two. And then the last two chains that you have left is one single crochet each, but you're not done yet. So I've gone all the way across and now I'm just gonna flip it upside down. So you have eight stitches total so far. So then you're gonna go on the bottom side here and just count out loud. So you have nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And the last one is gonna be 14. And you were going to slip stitch it to the very first one that you started with. So it's right here. So just slip stitch and that causes it to go around in a circle. So let's move on to rounds two and three. So rounds two and three, you're just gonna chain up one and apply one single crochet in each one of the stitches all the way around. And you'll do that for both of the rounds. And then I'll be joining you back here in just a moment. So do those two and I'll see you back here in a second. So I'm at the end of the first round, so I'm just gonna slip stitch and then restart. So chain one and one more for the second round. So I'm back around and I'm just gonna slip stitch here. And I wanna leave an extra long tail to be able to sew this onto the character. So just cut your yarn and then uh, we're gonna move on in the pattern. So let's begin the body and the head. And now we're gonna be using that sparkle yarn that I have or whatever color you would like to do. So we wanna create a magic loop first. So put two fingers out like this and there's other tutorials available just in case you need to know and you're going to cross over. You're just gonna scoop underneath this one and collect there and you're gonna remove your hand and then these two here make up the magic loop. I'll show you one more time. So two fingers out, yarn is in front wrap around your finger and cross over the back. Get this one right here, scoop underneath, collect, move your hands out, 
and you are just going to chain one to lock it and we're going to begin then the first time around so first round let's begin so you can do what sarah is suggesting chain one and do one single crochet so this is already considered chain one and do 10 single crochet into the ring now i prefer to do continuous rounds when i do amigurumi so i never end up having a, a stitch line so that's up to you and if you'd like to follow that please refer to her pattern so starting in the very beginning this one's already secured i'm going to put in 10 single crochets into the ring Make sure you're going up over top of the two strands at the same time. So that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. I want you to hold here. If you're going to do continuous rounds like I am, you're going to want to put in a stitch marker on the 10th one. So just slide it right underneath and you're going to move that every time you're on the very last stitch of a round so that you can keep a count of your rounds. So you're just sliding in a stitch marker just to hold it. But because this is the very first time we're doing it, I want to turn it over to the back side and I want to grab the yarn that is leading to the end and I want to pull. This yarn can snap if you pull way too tight, so just be a little bit gentle with it and let it just slide and allow itself to close. There we go, got it. So you want it nice and tight and keeping it on the back side. Now this will come out if you do not secure it, so you need to put it through a tapestry needle and you need to weave it in and out of some of the yarn. Don't go to the front side of your circle so I don't want to see the hook on the other side or I'll reach through the screen right now and just slap your hands. So keep it on the back side. And if you want to tie it into a little knot, if just in case you are worried about it, you can do so because it's going to be the inside of your character anyway. Okay, so just take your time. It's not a race. I feel like some of these tutorials I'm rushing because of time. But you have a little more time than I do. So once you have that secured in, you can safely just cut that down. You don't have to be too exact about it. And now that you have your stitch marker in position, you know which one was the last one, so you know where to start with first, but I will also show you as well. So let's start checking this stuff off as we go and move on to round number two. So let's pull this back down. And so we're gonna go 10th stitch back. If you're not sure, just count it back. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten so this is the tenth one i can tell from experience that was but that's how i would do it if i were you i want to do a continuous round but if you don't want to and follow her instructions just chain up one and apply two single crochets in each one of the ten if you're like me and about to do it i don't want to chain one at all and i just want to apply ten single or ten um sorry two st uh, stitches in each one of the ten so because it's my first revolution around i want to make sure the counts are right so those two went into the one so i will say one and one in my head i will move to the next one and put two in that one and i'll say two and two i'll do the next one three and three next one four and four Next one, five and five. Next one is six and six. Next one is seven and seven. So we have eight and eight and nine and nine. And then the last one where the stitch marker is, that's 10 and 10. So you just guaranteed that there's two stitches in each one of the 10 by the time you got to the stitch marker. And I want you to move that stitch marker up and pull through. Now, be before I move on, see how I kind of pulled up these? I want to do that. I want to go back into those and I just want to kind of pull it back down in. Might have been the loose ends that I had pull those in now because you won't be able to do that later and now move on to the third round okay round number three you're going to start off if you're doing it the way that she wants it in the pattern please do it that way 
and then after you change one if you're going to do it that way it's going to be two single crochets into the first one and then we have one single crochet into the next and you're going to repeat that idea all the way going all the, uh, going all the way around so you're going to say two into the next and then one into the one after that please do this all the way around for round number three so in keeping with this stitch count it's just one into the very last stitch if you're doing continuous rounds just move that stitch marker up so you can see it again in the future and move on to round number four okay round number four if you're doing it sarah's way just chain up one and do the following if you're doing it my way just immediately start and you're going to place in two single crochets into the first stitch and then one single crochet into the next two and that'll be your repeat all the way around so two into the next and then two, uh, one into each of the next two please do that around for round number four so coming into the next two these are just keeping in sync with the sequence what i'm going to do is give you instructions going forward for the rounds that are just what the repeat is and then i'll tell you to do it and then i will see you on the next round so i will be meeting you at the end of each round to verify the counts so that just keep in mind in that and now let's move on to round number five let's start round number five if you're doing it her way just chain up one and do one single crochet in each stitch if you're doing it my way just start and single crochet in each and crochet all the way down or around to the stitch marker and this will be round number five i'll be right back okay number six we're going to get a little bit bigger if you're doing it her way just chain up one and then uh, for my way just start off and you for both of us, it's just a two single crochets into the first one, and then one single crochet into the next three, and that's your repeat going around. So two into the next, and then three by itself. Please do that for round number six. So let's do rounds number seven through to 14. That's a total of eight rounds. If you're doing it her way, make sure you chain one in between each of the going around and then one single crochet in each. For myself, it's just one single crochet in each and just keep on going around and around and do it a total of eight times. So I will meet you at the end of number 14 in just a few seconds from now. So I'm at the end of number 14. So I've done all this going around and around. Number 15, we're going to start doing single crochet two together. So we're going to start getting in and I'm going to show you a technique that's used in amigurumi to prevent lines that appear when you do a reduction. So here's what you're going to do. If you're going to do it Sarah's way, just chain up one and then you're going to do single crochet two together over the first two stitches and then one single crochet over the next three. Still do it my way if you're going to um, continue with the, the reduction. So in my case, I'm just going to immediately just scoop under the first one. So just grab the front loop of the first stitch only. And then you're going to go and just move the hook down and grab the second front loop in a row. So you have technically the first two stitches on your hook. And you're going to yarn over, pull through both and then pull through two, and that just pulled the two stitches into one. And so the next three will be by itself. So we have one, two, three, and I'll demonstrate that one more time. So scoop under the first one, the first front loop, and then go for the next one. So just move the hook and grab the second front loop and pull through, pull through two, and now you've just made two stitches into one and then three into the next. So please do that same sequence all the way around for round number 15. Okay, round number 16, if you're doing it her way, chain one, one single in each. My way, just one single crochet in each and just uh, move up your stitch marker when you get all the way back around. I'll be right back in a second. This is round number 16. Number 17, if you're doing it her way, chain up one and then proceed. My way, just single crochet the next two together. Do the same thing that I showed you on the way to do it and then you're going to put the next two by itself so single crochet two together the next two are by itself single crochet two together and do the next two by itself and please do that all the way around for round number 17. okay lucky round number 18 if you're going to do it her way chain up one and then proceed my way just single crochet the first two together and then you're going to do one by itself just be patient with yourself. These front loops can be kind of tricky. So two together and then one by itself and then two together, one by itself and do that sequence around for lucky round number 18. 
So let's start round number 19. If you're doing a her way, chain up one and then put two single crochets in each. My way, just two single crochets in each all the way to the stitch marker. And so now you're starting to create the head. We're at the neck area now. And so you now have the base and now you're proceeding to the head as we go. So two singles in each. I'll be right back. Okay, round number 20. If you're doing a her way, chain up one and apply one single crochet in each. Doing it my way, just one single crochet in each all the way to the stitch marker. And I'll see at the end of number 20 in a moment. Okay, round number 21, we're going to start. And we're, if you're gonna do a her way, chain up one and then proceed my way, just two single crochets into the first. One and two, and then one single crochet into the next stitch. And you're gonna repeat that around. So two into the next and one into the one after that. Please do this around for round number 21. Rounds number 22 to 29 is just one single crochet in each stitch going around. So if you're gonna do it her way, chain one in between each one of the rounds. If you're doing it my way, do it like you did before, moving your stitch marker up every time. It is a total of eight rounds. So rounds number 22 to 29, and then I'll meet you there at the end of number 29. And we're gonna be starting something unique at that point. So I'll see you at the end of number 29 in a few seconds. Now that I have my eyes done, I'm not gonna sew those on until near the end of the project. So I'm going to be taking you back to the project where Sarah's suggesting because the safety eyes need to be put on uh, the project itself. But because I have attached it to the eyes here first, I'm gonna sew the eyes directly to the character later on. So for hers, what we have to do is come back to where we are. We're currently at the end of the 29th round and we need to mark where those eyes are going to be and we also need to fasten them in. So um, how I snap them is how you're gonna do it. So let's talk about that. So the first thing we need to do is we need to locate where the eyes and the beak are going to be. So it says attach safety eyes between the 27th and 28th round. We're currently on round number 29. So what I want to do is that I wanna turn it. So if you have a, a slip stitch line, keep it towards the back of the duck and just turn it around. In my case, because it's continuous circles, I'm just gonna go and put this on the very back and I'm gonna work on the front here. So we know this is the round 29, 28, and 27. So we know that the eyes are between the uh, 27th and the 28th round. So 29, 28, 27, so it's here somewhere. So what I'm just gonna do is just kind of look behind and I'm just going to place a stitch marker to just mark a position of where one eye should be. And I like to use these kind of ideas first. And then it says here that the eyes are approximately 10 stitches apart from each other. So go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I just want to count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's 10 stitches in between and I'm going to grab the same stitch marker and I'm going to pull forward. So here's where the two eyes are going to be. So she wants us to snap those eyes. So whatever eyes that you decided to use, you're going to position those there. Okay. And you will use your washers to snap them into position. But because I'm going to sew my eyes on later, I'm not going to position my eyes at this time. But what I want to do, though, is that I do want to know where that is. So I'm going to keep my stitch marker in place. So put your eyes on. And the, no, the, sorry, the beak is going to be in between the spot here. So I am going to sew on my beak now. And we have our beak, just like you see. Okay, and her beak has a little bit of a, a turn like this because of the way that we did the first one. So we are going to look at the pattern and you'll notice that the top of the beak is kind of like matching where the eyes are gonna be. So what you need to do is you no need to sew on the beak going in around completely the edge. So it has like an opening. So just keep that towards the, the duck. And if you want to pin it down to the duck first to do it, you can decide to do that as well. And I would recommend, because she's having us do this and because we can get to the out, uh, to the inside of it, I'd recommend that you go all the way through the duck. So go through the material itself and sew the duck on, or sew the beak on. <laughs> and don't screw the duck up. <laughs> like I'm about to here with the, the strand. Okay, so I'm gonna pull through. So I'm noticing where I am. 
for the eyes. So I'm seeing that I'm coming in one stitch in. So I'm gonna make sure that the other side is kind of the same positioning. Now that I'm on the other side, I'm gonna pop on through somewhere else and just come out and just secure the beak. And I wanna kind of get that shape to be iconic. I'm gonna come through. So what I want you to do is trace the beak around and make it look good. And I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm coming all the way around to where I had started. Take your time, it's not a race. And once you're all the way around, I see that I have like the half moon shape that I want. You can also flex that. So go through to the back side of your duck. I'm gonna leave my stitch marker in place for now. And I just wanna just go through a couple strands. So don't allow this to be shown all the way through. So just go through and allow it to tie onto itself. And because it's the inside of the duck, you can be a little lazy about the loose ends if you'd like to. But you never heard that from me, just so you know. So don't be throwing me under the bus in those comments. I wouldn't do that in front of you. You do whatever you need to do. Once that's in, snippy snip. And you're going to continue now. So your safety eyes would be in at this uh, moment if you decided to do safety eyes. So they'll be over here somewhere. wherever I put the safety eyes, so it'll be the, there and there. And you know, once this gets its shape, it's gonna be awesome. My safety eyes are gonna be kind of uh, much bigger and I'm gonna position mine in a way that will be more, a very concerned duck. I know, <laughs> it's crazy, Ooh, makes me smile. Let's begin and let's continue on with this journey of moving on to round number 30. Okay, so now we got the roadblock over of doing the eyes. And if you are gonna do a table, watch the safety eyes so they don't just scratch on top of the table because it is plastic. Um, so just make sure you are watching that. So round number 30, we're going to start off. If you were doing a her way, chain up one and then start. In my case, it's just gonna be single crochet two together. Use the same concept of how I've been showing you to do it of two together. So two together. And then you're going to do one single crochet into the next eight and then two together, and then into the next eight, and this will be round number 30. So please do this, and I'll join you back here at the end of the circle in a moment. Okay, round number 31. We're gonna continue, if you're doing a her way, chain up one, and then continue. In my case, it's gonna be single crochet, two together, and then the next seven will be by itself, single crochet together, and then the next seven, and that will be round number 31. So let me do that, and I'll be right back. Time for round number 32. So if you're doing a her way, chain up one and then continue. In my case, it'll be single crochet two together and then one single crochet into the next six. So single crochet together and then uh, one single crochet into the next six. Please do that for round number 32. Okay, number 33 is up next. So if you're gonna continue like she has, chain one. And then in my case, it's just going to be, and then everybody else, it's gonna be single crochet two together and then five by themselves. So single crochet two together and then the next five stitches are just a single crochet. Please do that for round number 33. Now that we're done round number 33, just checking it off my list, I'm gonna get my polyfill and I'm gonna start stuffing this duck pretty firm. And once I keep moving on the rounds, I'm just gonna keep stuffing and stuffing. So go all the way to the base and stuff and get the shape to be filling, filling out. And when I join you back on number 34, you'll see that my duck is partially stuffed most of the way. So I'm looking at my duck here and I would like this to be a little bit more rounded like this. Here's a little secret that I have. So I'm actually okay with um, improvising on stuff. So what I'm going to do is just grab another spare piece of yarn and I wanna grab where this is on the back side. So don't go all the way through the project, just grab some strands. And this has a slip knot on the other side. And what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna come on over to where this piece is over here on the back side. I can see where the stitching is. And again, don't go all the way through, just stay in the back. Like this. And because I'm now just attached to the first one, if I pull on it and just kind of help it a bit, it can get it to turn a little bit. So keeping the tension on, just uh, tie it onto itself. Is this cheating? Absolutely. And it will 
help keep it to have its face shaped like that. And don't think we don't do that behind the scenes because we do. So anyway, now it has more of a, a loopy thing. So that's something that you can do if, if that is happening to you. So let's continue to round number 34. So it's mostly stuffed. It's harder when the projects get this big behind the camera. So I'm going to a single crochet the first two together. So single crochet. If you're doing it her way, chain one first, single crochet two together, and then one single into the next four. When you have the stuffing in place, which I do, use your fingers behind it to keep the stuffing from being stitched right into the stitch work because it's harder to get it out um, later. It's more of a mess for you to clean up. Um, so just make sure you keep your hands behind to keep the um, stuffing from coming through. So single crochet two together and then four into the next and so on. Okay, round number 35. If you're gonna do a her way, chain up one and then proceed. In my way, just single crochet two together and then one into the next and keep doing that all the way around. You're gonna notice that it's really gonna start decreasing quite significantly now. So if you need to add more stuffing, now's the time to do it as you go. So it's just one, uh, two single crochet, or sorry, single crochet two together and then one into the next and repeat that all the way around. Okay, here's your last round, number 36. It's if you're doing a her way, chain up one and then single crochet two together and keep doing that around. My way, just continue to go single crochet two together and go all the way back. This is gonna leave a slight hole at the very top and we're gonna close that off together. And so single crochet two together all the way around. Okay, once you're all the way around, I want you to cut the yarn long enough that you can put this through a tapestry needle. And you have to be very careful when you yank on or not blanket too hard because the core of the yarn is um, is not as strong as like other yarns. So just pull this through. You can pull out your stitch marker and you wanna seal that hole in. So all you're gonna do, sorry, this is really awkward. So I'm gonna put this through a tapestry needle and I'm gonna collect the remaining stitches that are open at the top of the duck. And I'm just gonna go in and out and just start collecting them. And then once I'm all the way around, I'm gonna pull on the yarn, be firm about it, but don't like reef on it. Just let the stitches just glide and close. And then you're just gonna seal the top and end that and leave the tail ends on the inside of your duck. So my duck is now made and the head's bigger, obviously. And it's actually really quite cute. Um, so now I can apply my eyes if I really felt like it. So I can apply my eyes very much like the the, uh, the beak. The only difference is, is that I'm just going to glide in and out because I can't access them behind. And so I would position these in a way that seems like it's just kind of fun and outrageous. And even if you want to um, just um, just so and the irises pop off like it is right now, that's kind of cute too. So you get to use your own creativity if you want to move them out. It's up to you. You are the artist at the end of the day, so let me sew these bad boys on. So now I have my eyes sewn on. I know pedestrian as pedestrian gets. <laughs> let's begin and do wings next. So let's begin to do the wings next. The wings and the feet are actually pretty simple. I've done both of them right now so that I had um, practice, and then we'll do the tail at the end. So you'll make, need to make two wings. These are really quite simple, but at least the wings are. The booties are a little bit more complicated, but nothing to worry about. And let's begin doing wings next. So let's begin. You are going to create a magic a circle or a magic ring. And you are just going to start. And I need you to put in nine single crochets into the magic ring. I need you to secure the beginning tail, get that out of the way and secure down and then do that. So please start your magic ring and do nine single crochets into the ring. I'm going to do a continuous circle, but if you'd like to do hers, then you just have to slip stitch between each one of the rounds. So please do this now and I'll be right back. So now that my nine are in and I have secured it, I'm going to do one single crochet in each one of the stitches. If you're gonna do it her way, slip stitch first, then chain one and do one single crochet in each. If you're gonna do continuous rounds like I am, just uh, start in single crochet. Make sure that you do have nine by the time you get back to your stitch marker and move it up. So one single crochet in each and just count it out loud to yourself and make sure that you have nine by the stitch marker. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, if you've not figured it out yet, you're doing the tip of the wing first and you're ending on the shoulder of the wing. So starting in the very next stitch, if you're doing it my way, if you're doing it her way, chain up one and then start the re uh, repeat of going around. So the first one is going to be uh, two single crochets into the next one. And then it's gonna be one single crochet into the next two stitches. 
So the repeat is two into the next one and then two by itself. Please do this for number three. Okay, round number four, just one single crochet in each stitch going all the way around. And if you're keeping count and you want to, you can find that on the pattern as well. It's a total of 12 stitches. So just one single crochet in each around. If you did it like her, just chain up one and then one single in each. I'll be right back. Okay, round number five. If you're gonna be like her, just chain up one and then start the repeat, which will be, in our case, two uh, single crochets in the first. And then it's gonna be one single crochet into the next three. So two single crochets in one, and then the next three are one single crochet each. Please do this around for round number five. Lucky round number six is just one single crochet in each stitch all the way around. So do that for number six, one single crochet in each. Okay, round number seven, two single crochets into the first one, and then one single crochet into the next four, and repeat that all around. So two into the next, and then four single crochets by itself. Please do that around for number seven. Okay, let's make some Tootsie Pops. You're gonna notice that it does have three toes. You can see one, two, and the third one's not so obvious, but it's there. And so that will be facing up when you're putting it to the character and you'll be lightly stuffing it as well. It'll just attach to the character. It's not as hard as it looks actually, and there's less rounds than the wings. Let's begin. So I need you to create that magic ring that you know about, and I want you to start it and I want you to put in 10 single crochets into the center of the magic ring, and then um, you can join it if you wanna do it Sarah's way, or if you wanna do it my way, just to keep it as a continuous uh, revolution going around. Let's start making these feet now. So 10 single crochets into the magic ring and secure it shut and close. So I'm going in a continuous revolution. If you're not, and you've done the slip stitch, then just chain up one, and you are going to apply two single crochets into each one of the 10. There will be a total of 20 single crochets by the time you get all the way around. If you're doing it like I am, make sure you move that stitch marker up in the last one. So just apply uh, two single crochets in each of the stitches all the way around. Okay, number three, we're going to start making toes. So if you're doing it like she is, then just chain up one and then start for myself, if you're doing it my way, I want you and her also to single crochet the first six stitches you run into. So let's start counting this stuff out. So we're gonna say, if I could just actually crochet, it would even be better. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now the next one, you're gonna put three double crochets in it to create a toe. So three double crochets in the same one. So one, two, and three. And now the next two are gonna be a single crochet stitch each. You're gonna notice that this will buckle inward. You could just pop it out later. So don't worry about it yet. The next one is gonna be three double crochets in the same one. This is toe number two. And then there's going to be two single crochets in a row. And now we're going to th do the third toe. So it's going to be three uh, double crochets again. And then the last seven stitches will each be one single crochet at each. Just make sure there is seven. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. If you were off by one, I wouldn't worry about it so much, but try to get it to be right, but that's something that you can decide. So that's the end of number three. Let's move on to number four. If you're doing it like she is, just chain up one and then follow everybody else, like me. You're gonna use the back loops only. So you're gonna start and count, and you're gonna do the first eight in the back loop only. So in crochet, if you're new, chances are you're not doing this pattern, but if you were, um, there's two that uh, two lines that are two strands that make up a stitch. I want you to just use the back loop only, the back strand, and do the first eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This took you to the first 
double crochet of the group of three. So I want you to skip the next double crochet, which is right here, and then you're just gonna do and, and uh, start single crochet in the back loop only of the next four. That helps the toes stick out. So we have one, two, three, and four. And this takes you to the first double crochet of the grouping of three. So skip the next one. Just go immediately after the one after that and do the next four. So we have one, two, three, and four. And so you're gonna skip the next double crochet, which is the middle one of the toe. Go to the one after that. And you're just gonna go do that. And you're just gonna continue now. After you've done that last skipping over, you're just gonna uh, single crochet yourself all the way back to where you started. And that will finish off round number four. flip it this way because it's easier. So by doing the back loops only, you've created the material to turn naturally on itself. So make sure you go into the back loop of the first one you started with and then move your stitch marker up if you're doing it my way. And now let's move on to round number five. In round number five, it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. There's a total of 23 stitches if you want to keep count. It's up to you. I don't, I don't think you need to, but if you wanted to, you could. And I'll see you at the end of number five in a moment. Round number six, you're going to do a single crochet in the first, and then you're going to do single crochet two together for the remaining all the way around. Because we had 23 stitches, it's an odd number, so that's why we had to make sure the first one is just one single crochet by itself, but all the rest of them are single crochet to do two together using the same technique that I've been showing you all along and this will significantly close in this hole. So please do that all the way around. One more round to go and then you can lightly stuff this thing and you'll have your feet done and it's just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. Leave a long tail on for sewing and that'll complete your feet and make sure you do two. And I'll be right back in a moment. Just as a general note, as I finish, make sure the toes are facing up when you go to sew it to the character. And so when you move the character in, and I'm not gonna sew anything together until I have my tail done, but it'll just be at the end and just kind of attaching. So like that with the toes facing up. Okay, let's start the tail and you'll sew that on later and start with the magic ring or magic loop. And I need you to put six single crochets into the magic loop and secure it and close it. Okay, so do that. This is your first step. So six single crochets into the magic ring. So let's start round number two. If you're doing it like Sarah, just chain up one and you did the slip stitch, a chain one, and then do the following. In my case, just start immediately and do the following. So it'll be two single crochets into the first one and then one into the next. And you'll do that all the way around. So please do that. So two into the um, next one and then one into the one after that. I'll see you at the end of the round. Round number three, you're gonna start off and you're gonna put two into the first one and then one into the next two. So two into the first one, one into the next two, and that's what you're gonna do all the way around. I'll see you at the end of this round, number three. So do your next round, number four, and it is gonna be two into the first one and then one into the next three. And you'll do that all the way around. So two into the first one and then one into the next three, and I'll see you at the end of the round. Round number five, you're gonna start off two into the first one and then one into the next four. So please do that. So two into the next, one into the next four. Please do that for number five. You'll notice that the tail has a slight curve on it. So it's happening here in round number six. So if you're doing it like her, just chain up one and then follow along. Everybody else like me, then you're just gonna put two single crochets into the first three stitches. So two into that one, so it's one, two into the next, that's two, and two into the next, that's three. Then you're just gonna apply one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around to the other side. So please do that around, this is number six. Lucky round number seven, if you're doing it like Sarah, just chain up one and then follow along. Everybody else is just one single crochet in each of the stitches around. So just one single in each. I'll be right back at the end of number seven. Round number eight, if you're doing it like Sarah, just chain up one 
and then everybody else with me is you're just gonna put two single crochets into the first four stitches. So two into that one, so that's one, two into the next one, this is two, two into the next one, this is three, two into the next one, this is four. Then you're just gonna apply one single crochet into the remaining of the stitches going all the way around. This is lucky round number eight. I'm not sure why it's lucky, but it is today. Continue and I'll be back on the last round in a moment. Finally, the last round, if you're doing it like Sarah, just chain up one, everybody else, just gonna single crochet all the way around. This is gonna be the end of this and we got really close to the end of the ball, almost to the point where I was flipping out Sarah. <laughs> I hate when I get too close to the end. Um, it's not yarn chicken, but it could be yarn chicken because I only got a fistful of yarn left and I'm freaking out. <laughs> so this is breakout points today for Sarah. And we're now finished. We're going to lightly stuff this thing and sew it to the back end of your duck. And I'm going to have you do all the sewing on your own. And we'll just quickly recap that in a moment. I'm coming all the way around and I notice that the curve is this here is on the side. So I'm just gonna slip stitch the next one after the one I finished because of the way I'm doing it and leave a long enough tail to be able to sew this onto the character. We're gonna talk about assembly in just a few moments and I've already kind of shown you how I've done some things. So I'm gonna rely on your expertise to be able to finish your character off and let's go back to the picture now. So you got two photos to use. My printer is off, that's why the colors are off. But you can see where the characters are. The arms kind of come a little forward. They're not just on the sides like a mannequin. They're kind of just uh, more towards the front of the body. And then the toads are facing up and they're just kind of attached as you see. So just match the attaching and put on the tail and you're good to go. And just make sure you have everything that you would like to do. And you know, you can always add on extra stuff that you think is cool. In other words, this is it for today. And I'll show you a final photo of my finished duck in a few moments from now. Check this one out. Yes. Oh, it just wants to be cuddled and everything. And you can have this too. And hopefully you enjoyed today's tutorial. You can let me know in the comments. <laughs>